Welcome back everyone and before we head into our third LCS game of the day I'd like to remind you that you can show support for your favourite LCS teams by logging into League of Legends and picking up their summoner icons. Yeah, the 2014 summoner icons for all 16 LCS teams are now for sale with 20% of those sales going directly to the teams themselves. So now you'll be able to support your favourite squads on and off the rifts. Now let's hear from Fnatic's former AD carry and Season 1 World Champion Lamia about leaving the team and how Reckless is following in his footsteps. I used to play AD carry for Fnatic in Season 1 and 2. It wasn't as professional as it is now. Like every week having the league to play and living in a gaming house, it changes things. We knew before Season 3 started that we were going to have to move to Cologne, but I was halfway through my studies and I didn't want to give that up. And I decided to retire before season three started so the team had a lot of time to find a new player. When I started watching League of Legends, it was like sort of the, the AD carry to watch, right? <laughs> watching Reckless play is always amazing. I was so happy when they found him and when they finally could put him in the team, yeah, it worked out so fine. This could turn out horribly for Fnatic. We think it's gonna be a double kill! The Super Mega Death Rocket! I think he can almost do it a decade or so. With his skills, if they stay like this, easily. I wanna end with the flag up top rather than winning something and then keep playing just because I want the money, I want the fame, and then I start playing worse and then it just ends bad in the end. So I'd rather just stop when we just want something or I we perform well. Great to hear from Lamy, a former AD a carry legend. hero, a legend of League of 100%. Legends, season one world champion, of course. Well, guys, it is time to get things started between Fnatic and Millennium. Millennium are going to be looking to avenge their loss from earlier this split, where they ran Carthus into a heavy disengaged composition from Fnatic, which was all about the kite and fight. Yeah, and it's the one and only time we have seen Nuno jungle this split in Europe, and it actually was fantastic. Sanad, he played his role perfectly, and his team backed away from every engage they wanted to with well-placed absolute zeros. And Nuno as a pick actually fits in the current meta pretty well, so we could see it again. And Fnatic played against Gambit yesterday, but we have to say, up against Gambit with four solo queue players basically in the lineup, they weren't all that impressive. No, I mean, yeah, okay, so Fnatic, they dominated the laning phase and they focused a lot on objectives, but it still took them 42 minutes to actually finish the game. And now playing against Millennium here, Millennium yesterday, played very passive. If Fnatic has the same focus on objectives here, they should be able to take everything and maybe even win the game from it. Well, of course, yesterday Millennium lost to Rockat and they looked like a team that never <laughs> really wanted to do anything. Exactly, I mean, they looked so passive. They just let Rocket do everything and they just lost objectives throughout the entire game. And it was so weird to see for me because Millennium sometimes are very aggressive, but this, this game, did nothing. Maybe it's the stage, I don't know. Well, they keep finding new picks through Millennium and different play styles, but it really seems to backfire for them more often than not, I have to say. Yeah, so yesterday we had Kerber and Syndra as a counter pick to the LeBlanc here, and while the pick itself didn't lose the game, it didn't actually do anything in the game here. Rocket was just waiting for him to misstep and then caught him out of position and killed him. And it seems to me like Millennium, they really picked a play style for the game they're playing now, depending on how Curb starts out. If he, do, if he has a great start, gets a few kills, everyone plays really aggressive, they go crazy, they set up plays everywhere. If he has a bad start and he can't get going, the entire team just plays very passive, they wait for Curb to do something, and it's a big, big issue for them, they definitely have to fix it. And of course, they need to be more, oh, more consistent, less inconsistent, because it's always the issue for Millennium, we never know what to expect. I was going to say, I don't think they could actually no, no, no. be more inconsistent at Agreed. this point. Winning some games, losing the others, we never quite know which Millennium's going to turn up. But we are going to check out the starting lineups before we start the game. On the blue side for this match is Fnatic, with Soaz in the top lane, Cyanide in the jungle, Xpeke in the middle, and the duo of Reckless and Yellowstar. For Millennium on the red side, we have Kevin in the top lane, Codnex as the jungler, Curb in the mid lane, Kraton as AD carry, and of course Jerry on support. And we'll be heading into the jungle for today's featured matchup between Cyanide and Codnex. And it's two junglers with very different style. I mean, we have Cyanide, he's a team player, he sacrificed a lot of farm for himself to gank and help out his laners, where Codnex is more of a carry jungler. He focuses a lot on getting farm, and then once you get to team fights late game, he can actually do a lot. And the funny thing is, Aaron Ayer, who's now the coach for Fnatic, he used to be the jungler for Millennium, so maybe he knows a few tricks here about his lane as you would give to Cyanide or the team, 
and he can then use it against Millennium and maybe find a kill. And some interesting numbers there, specifically with the wards, I think, almost, or more than double wards purchased by Cyanide. Team so that player? Shows you. Carry Jungle. Yeah. Team player of Carry Jungle. Different styles coming into this one. We'll have to see how that all works out for them in this game. But well, before we get into bands and picks, let's see who you guys think are going to win this one. With 76% of the vote, Fnatic leads Millennium. We'd also like to remind you that you can get tickets to join us and watch these games in person when we return to Cologne. Just head to lolesports.com and click on tickets at the top for all the details. And I really want to see if Curb wants to play Syndra again in this game here. Or maybe he was like, you know what, I tried it, it didn't really work for me, I'm going to look for something else. Because he's a type that can play a champion he didn't practice for weeks. He's just going to pick it anyway, and the team trusted him. And if it works, great, perfect, everyone loves Curb. But when things goes wrong, it's where the entire Millennium really suffer, suffers from it. One thing's for sure, they're probably going to ban Cassidy. I mean, they're on red side right. today. They've been banning it on blue side as well, but we can pretty much forget the fact that Cassidy well, will be available this game because it's probably not going to be. But where will the other bans be focused, in your opinion? So, I mean, we can look to something like a kill ban. It's been a pick which everyone loves to play. I mean, generally, there's all these strong picks they can go for, unless they want to maybe target Cyanide. Yeah. I want to say, you know what, we're not going to give you a leash, we're not going to give you a leash in Evelyn, ban away two of them, try and get one themselves, or force Fnatic to first pick a jungler. Or again, they are blue side, so they are pretty much forced, or red side, sorry, they are forced to ban a lot of these strong picks here, like Braum, yeah. Cassidy, and so on. Well, we're going to find out, because we're headed into Champion Select for Fnatic versus Millennium. And the first ban out the gate, actually going to be Lucian, so going straight towards Creaton. Ah, so hitting Creaton here, maybe we could see Fnatic going towards the Twitch. It's been working for Reckless really well many, many times. Of course, they're different, although AD carries at the moment. Corgi is suddenly coming up in, in Europe as well. Could be the target for the Millennium so far. As expected, banning out what they consider the strong picks at the moment. Yeah, Fnatic getting rid of Jax and the Ziggs. Always an important ban, I think, against yeah. Millennium. We've seen time and time again how strong Curb is on Ziggs overall. Braum, as you said, also going to be banned away with Cassidy. That leaves the likes of Nidalee possibly open here uh, for Fnatic, because <laughs> we see that Kale will be the final ban. So they did go exactly for just, you know, we don't want to deal with any of these very, very strong picks here. It does mean, however, they're actually leaving up with this in for Sanat, a jungler he always loved to play here. And a jungler where he can put so much early pressure, and we know he loves to gank early on. He doesn't want to focus too much on farming. And he also loves to ward. Lee Sin, perfect match for Sanat here. And think about the Ziggs ban against Curb, it's the only champion he's been playing consistent on. So therefore they yeah. take it away. And yeah, not Millennium off the game, not Curb off his game. Seems to be a, a plan that works against Millennium, that's for sure. But they did leave LeBlanc open. Oh. That's a champion that Curb has shown that he can play very well. They also take Twitch here for Creatine after the Lucian ban. So already focusing a lot on getting picks here before the team fights even start. We have Twitch sneaking around, finding a target, and of course Kerb on the bomb just looking to explode someone. We need to see if he's going to do the golden blue thing and go DFG first, if he gets a good start and try and simply snowball the lead, or is he going to go for the more standard Athens into death cap, into a void staff and be more, or be stronger in longer team fights. Well, we'll find that out as things go along. What a fanatic going to lock in here. Already got Lee Sin for the jungle. Looks like they want to secure their bottom lane. They're going to take Corky and Morgana. So Corky and Morgana here. So with the Lucian ban again, they focus on what other strong laning AD carries do we have. Corky, he was the one who's coming up here. Reckless actually played quite a lot of Corky in the past. Picking, picking it up here and of course with Morgana to help out against the likes of Kirby if he wants to just instantly blow him up, put in the black shield there, try and save Reckless and at least let him jump away in case Kirk comes in very aggressive towards him. So for Millennium then we talked about the junglers in our featured matchup and there is Cotnex on your screen. Is he gonna be taking Elise for this one? As we mentioned, not really well, no bands aimed towards the junglers, so they get pretty much free reign on that one. Already got Lee Sin for Cyanide. Looks like we may see Kevin moving to Aatrox in this top lane as well. So Saws actually played Aatrox yesterday against Gambit. Could be the reason Millennium want to take it away from him now. Saving actually their jungle pick for the last one here. And then locking in Leona with the Aatrox. Simply to say, you know what, we also want some engage now. We want to be able to catch you out of position. Leona is perfect for it. However, against Morgana, can be a little bit of a tricky thing to engage, at least in team fights. Laning phase, you always talk about how the Black Shield is very strong to stop Leona, but there's room for 
outplay from the side of Leona. You can go in, bait the black shield, and then just change target, lock the second target down, and go for the kill onto him. So, final round of picks for Fnatic. Bottom lane and jungler already sorted. What are they going to take for Peke in this middle lane against Kerbs LeBlanc? What will Soaz be running here on the top side of the map again? I mean, Shivana could be the standard. Shivana could be the standard safe top lane pick here. It's always a champion we talk about where she's she's never a champion to just win the lane by herself, but she always does well. And then when you when you go into team fight, she's always a very very strong pick, and you have multiple options for how you want to build her and how you want to play her. Well, Syndra as well was locked oh. in here from Peke. We talked about it already. That Kerb ran the Syndra against LeBlanc yesterday. Now we're going to get to see how strong Peke Syndra is going to be. And we heard Overpower in the interview after the game yesterday saying, yeah, against Syndra, I can't really go for any kills in the lane. I have to play very passive because, again, Syndra works really well against LeBlanc because you can stop her W if you stun her with the ball. And also your Q is longer range than the LeBlanc Q. Therefore, you can poke her from distance and stay very safe. So it's a, it's a hard lane for LeBlanc. And I want to see how Kerb decides to play. So final pick was for the jungle as well there for Millennium and for Cotonex who will take Evelyn. Definitely one of his big favorites in there. So much focus on catching our targets here and finding these one-on-one, -on -one, two and two fights. I mean, even Aatrox goes into one of those champions who really want to just one-on-one -on -one you, maybe even one, one v two you if he gets far enough ahead. So overall, Millennium really looking for the picks here. We're on the side of Fnatic. They have more of a standard. I would even also say they have somewhat of a pick comp here, but they also want to go more for team fight wise with Shivana. You have the Corky, of course, Morgana to peel away. And Morgana works well with Syndra in the case if you land the binding. All of a sudden you have a pick comp because Syndra will just blow up a target. Going to be a very interesting one. And now that the lineups are locked in, which jungle do you guys think is going to come out ahead? Tell us by tweeting hashtag cyanide or hashtag cottonx to at lol esports and we'll see in a little while who you guys picked for that one and our featured matchup of the day and very important roles but different roles that these two guys play yeah again we keep talking about how cyanide he's much of a team player he really wants to help out his lanes he buys a lot of wards and put a lot of focus on making sure everyone is safe where of course cottonx when he's playing evelyn as well he doesn't necessarily have to gain too much he can even farm go towards the late game point of Evelyn, where you can build a bit tanky and be very strong in team fights and also, again, catching our targets, which is the whole idea here for Millennium. And we have to, again, look back to the middle lane in this Peke versus Kerb. Could very well be a featured matchup because yeah. we've said it time and time again. Kerb can carry, but Kerb also has these games where he's almost non-existent. We remember back to the 0-5 Fizz game, for example. Syndra yesterday didn't work out for him. This matchup here with Peke, who traditionally does well on the mm -hmm. big stage, very interested to see how it goes. Millennium definitely have the option to set up ganks towards the mid lane. That's one of the strong things about LeBlanc, is you can always jump forward with your W, use your E to chain, attach it onto the target here, lock it down, and your jungler comes in, and it's very easy to set up ganks, especially against the Syndra, where you need to flash. Once it's on cooldown, you won't escape the chain here. So if Codnex puts a lot of focus on the mid lane, they might be able to get Kerb ahead. And then he can start snowballing and really shutting down the Syndra and then move on to all the other lanes. And we've seen it time and time again with Kerb. Once he gets going early on, the entire team simply wakes up and like, okay, let's make plays, let's make yeah. plays. Jerry can join in. We have uh, on Leona here, set up some plays. Up in the top lane, Kevin as well on Aatrox, one of the best champions at diving. What are you going to do? You just move Evelyn or you move your mid lane on LeBlanc up to the top lane and you just dive onto Source and kill him on the tower. So the other thing, you mentioned it a little bit earlier on, the RNA and now the coach of Fnatic, former jungle player for Millennium. He's obviously going to know how Millennium play. How much of a role is he going to play coming into this match? I think a huge part because he knows everything about these guys. He knows how they act if they fall behind. He knows yeah. how their idea is. I mean. Every player has their own kind of mindset in the game. Some top laners can be like, hey, jungler, come top all the time. We can just gank him and dive all the, over and over and over again. Kevin is not the type to do it, but some people would be. And he would be able to say to, fa to Fnatic, watch out here. They want to send the jungler top over and over again. They love to do this because you know the players here. So obviously, it's going to be a huge impact. And also, some players tend to go into a pattern of doing the same things because they've done it for such a long time, especially comes down to where they place the wards or how they juke to do the you know, to the right or to the left when they want to dodge a skill shot. Some places get into the same routine where they do it over and over. And because he's played on team with them, maybe he's talked 
with the players about it, he will know, we'll be able to inform Fnatic about all these small details. And just a quick update on the game. We've not forgotten it, don't worry. Jerry had a couple of issues there, so they just had to remake picks and bans. We will be getting into the match here in about 30 seconds' time. So don't forget, you can still tweet to us, hashtag cyanide or hashtag cottonx to at LOL Esports and let us know which jungle you think is going to come out ahead in this game. Let's talk about the AD carries here because Creaton had the Lucian banned out against him, got his hands on Twitch. Talk to me about that lane match of the Twitch versus Corky. Well, it's obviously, first of all, Corky's very, very strong in the lane where Twitch is not so strong. He needs some time to build up. He needs to blade of the Rune King before he can really start to duel people. So definitely in favor of Reckless. And also looking at supports. I mean, you have Morgana against Leona. Morgana, very, very strong. As long as you time the Black Shield correctly, Leona won't be able to engage onto you. So R Millennium side here could definitely look for a lane swap to get away from this duel in early. Or if they do get into 2v2, they might need some jungle help, which could mean that Kerb won't get it in the mid lane. So it could be issues for them. But we still, we need to see how they want to play it. Definitely think the bottom lane is in favor of Fnatic though in a straight up 2v2. And Millennium, we said it yesterday, very solidly a mid-table team right yeah. now. They've done well against certain teams and then lost to them straight away after they've been destroyed by some teams and then they been able to, be careful, to beat them the next time they meet them. I mean, Rocket has won the last four games and they're under them in the standings here. So Millennium, they need to win this one. Otherwise, Rocket might go above them. Very important game for both sides of the coin in this one. But we are going to get into game. It's Fnatic versus Millennium for our third LCS game of the day here in London. Let's see how this one is all going to go down and whether we'll see anything interesting at level one. Millennium, we know them as a team that did stuff at level one yep. before it was cool. He used to always go in and get some deep wards before the triggers were reduced down to 30 seconds. I don't actually think they're doing too much special now. They didn't actually go further with the attack. They're just keeping it fairly similar like most teams, but most teams do. For now, it's Fnatic moving in with four members to actually get a deep ward. Kerb will spot them out. And we see Kerb starting with Flask. He's doing the exact same thing Opa did yesterday against him. Yes, you're going to be very squishy, but you have to sustain. So even if you take some poke from the Syndra, you can stay in lane and farm. Look at this Millennium moving around to the Fnatic red buff. Fnatic themselves already on the top side of Millennium's junglers. Peke and Kerb. Once they have Kerb. the first exchange of the game and going nicely there for Kerb. What we're going to see, Peke actually going to recall, get himself all healthy, has his Kerb, regen that mana, and then just come straight back into lane. Fnatic have completely recalled out of the Millennium Jungle as well. And we can see that Creaton and Jerry already headed to lane, so looks like we're going to have a very standard start, and that is a big oh. vote for Cyanide, 93%. So, Fnatic is actually doing a different thing this game here with the early wards. We can't really see it because Aatrox is actually standing on the ward on the minimap, but they put it between the two, the first tower, of course, uh, the first top tower and the second top tower. So instead of it being in vision or in range of the towers to actually spot the ward, Millennium won't know that it's there. So they're basically trying to see if they can spot Creaton and Jerry moving from the base to the lane. We see the ward right here, Minions just walk past it. Millennium doesn't know it's there. However, because they're down this bottom lane, because they didn't walk past the ward, Fnatic expects them to actually be in this bottom lane. And they're up in the top lane here, so they're not going to get the lane swap. Now pushing Reckless into that top side. Morgana going to be moving across the map to uh, get in range there as well. Yellow Star did start off on that bottom side, so it's going to leave Corky Morgana versus Aatrox on the top side of the map and Twitch Leona versus well, Shivana, when he actually goes down there right now, using the body system, hanging around with his jungler to get a bit of XP. You know, always one of the great things about Shivana is you're so good at clearing the jungle. Even in the early levels, that's why she's one of the best top laners now. Because again, you just run with Cyanide. Very easy for them to clear out the camps, move on to the next one. Kevin up in his top lane here is actually stuck by himself. Got a few CS and now has to back away because Yellowstar joined in together with Reckless to force him away. So he's not... Farming with Codnex at the moment, and therefore falling slightly behind compared to Source, but you're going to, of course, turn around and say Codnex is getting slightly ahead compared to Cyanide. There is Fnatic moving now, Jungler and top laner towards their blue buff. Already got the red buff, that's where they started. And look at this, Kevin actually now moving down towards the bottom side of the map, possibly going to join his own jungler and go for what we expected here and get some XP himself some levels, but Fnatic already pushing quite heavily onto this outer turret. And of course, as we pretty much see most games when we have lane drops, it's going to be this 2 versus 0. 
where you just build up the wave, you push it into the tower, or you decide to freeze it, get some damage on the tower here. And because Fnatic has the dual lane in the top side, it means Millennium can just go and start the dragon. Shouldn't even expect Fnatic to be nearby at this point. They can still see Yellow Star in his top lane with Reckless. Therefore, the first dragon of the game should go to Millennium. And it's always the thing you sacrifice, which generally means if you have the stronger dual lane, like Fnatic does in this case, you should never swap it top because you give away the dragon for no reason. I simply think they were expecting Melinda to be top lane with the dual lane, and that's why they swapped up there, otherwise it made no sense. Well, we are going to see this dragon going down. That top turret still hanging on there by a thread. And actually, it looks like Reckless and Yellow Star possibly going to just recall from this one. And so as, is he going to head towards his top lane? Very interested to see about that, but basically a four-minute dragon being picked up by Millennium. Nice little star for them. Gives them a 600 gold lead. If you look down some of those early CS totals, pretty much even across the board. Only Soaz really got a, uh, a lead over his counterpart there, as obviously he's been more time in the jungle with Cyanide. And then Codnex, of course, been farming pretty well, first by himself, then joined in by Kevin afterwards, where you see Fnatic sharing actually the minions between Soaz and Sana. And again, it's the thing to talk about with carry jungler and team player. Sana doesn't mind giving some farm over to Soaz, but Codnex is pretty much taking everything by himself. Kevin can just stand beside him and get some XP. So, yeah. First runs of the game coming down from X Peke onto Kerb. Kerb got a slight lead on him in terms of XP there and actually trying to put some harassment down onto him as well in the early stages of this lane. And down in the bottom, Yellow Star joined by Soaz now up against Creelton and Jay Reed. The entire time Reckless has just spent pretty much alone. Not anymore as he's got Cyanide up there, but are they going to try and go for a bit of action onto Kevin's Aatrox? So Reckless, he's been freezing the lane up here in his top side. That's why Kevin is going up, because he wants to try and push it out, get it to reset so he can actually pick up some farm. And that's for, therefore, it's very smart sign of actually staying around in case Kevin just walks straight up to the minions. Now he's going to face check him. Oh, he's going to put the ward down there, but quick jump away from Kevin. Lost half of his health from that one, so could have been a little bit more dangerous, but with the jump and, of course, with a flash available to him as well, not too bad. And there are two people down this bottom lane for Fnatic, therefore Source can actually pick up some farm and also because Jiri can't really engage onto him. Unless, of course, there's no Black Shield and therefore he turned it onto Yellow Star. Yeah, going in there, Yellow Star already down to half, but can see Soaz trying to return that damage and got both Jerry and Creighton a little bit low as well. So, a bit of a scary moment there, Black Shield coming in a little late, but no first blood picked up just yet. Millennium still holding on to that lead. And we did actually see the outplay potential of the owner here against Morgana lane. Jerry engaged onto Source as soon as the Black Shield was there. Just changed target because Yellow Star was standing right next to him. Locked him down, got some damage onto him. But still, Source picking up some farm. Kevin on his top lane now actually managed to get to the wave, get some farm as well. So looking very good for him as well now. And up to 18 CS, which is bringing him pretty much level with that off. So as Reckless continues to farm up a storm, about to hit the 60 CS point with this next wave. We see two wards instead of just one in that brush as the Zenith play comes out. A little bit wide of its target though. That would have been a lot of health, I think, from uh, Soaz that would have gone down. This mid lane remained fairly quiet. Both players just going in for the farm. It's PK that leads that right now. Just want to push out the wave here, go back to base, and then once his blue buff spawns, he's gone back to shop, gets the blue buff, and can then really start to try and poke away on the curb. Both of them just been farming pretty well. I mean, we talk about the flash from Kerb, how he could now sustain himself, even if he took some poke and just focus on farming. And it's basically what we've been seeing in this mid lane. Pekin now got the first recall. Kerb now, of course, wants to just shove out the wave and do the same. Now we see Kerb just going to throw all that down. So he's sat on 1,700 gold to spend on his first journey home. See, as you mentioned earlier, we saw Golden Glue in the North American Challenger final early on, straight into DFG, and that really set him up for the rest of the game. He was able to get some early kills. I think he ended with about 12 by the end of that match, and we'll see Kirk decides to go that DFG route. As once again, Jay Reed could be a challenge. Though. Side and actually he's gonna land that Zenith Blade. He's a little bit far away. Critter not really joining in. And the damage gonna come back. And here is Cyanide again. The Q though landing onto the minion. And look at that. Spray and pray. Oh, that's that. That is it actually called now being used. And that's gonna force Yellow Star to back right off. Yeah, a lot of damage in return here from Chris. And very nice job. And we see Kirby in his mid lane. He went towards the Fiend. So he wants the magic resist against Expector here in the lane. And of course, it also means team fight wise, he's gonna have more mana. He can basically do more damage 
in a longer fight, where with the DFG he's full on focused on just blowing up the first target, and that's pretty much his job. Carnex here, is he going to try and get in around the backside? May even be looking for a sneaky play on that blue buff. Peke just going to knock Kurt back away. Carnex will spot Peke coming around to this one. He's going to try with the damage. Actually using his ulti, but he needs to be careful. Yellow's not oh, the in. Land the binding as well. Ignite is down. Carnex is going to die. And the first Beautiful one goes fighting. to Peke. There's actually Millennium trying to set up the Peke on to Xpeke once he moved towards the blue buff. Kirby even jumped in with his ulti. But just a beautiful binding by Yellowstar. Absolute max range. Just their very last bit hit Connex. Hit Flash using the exhaust to get in there to secure that kill as well. But kills a kill and that's going to make Peke a lot stronger. It's Reckless here going in towards Kevin. One more auto attack. Or the ultimate would have popped the blood well and Kevin forced to flash away. Forced to flash and Reckless has been farming by himself up here, one on one against Kevin for a long time actually. Yellowstar was in the bottom lane, then he helped with the blue buff. Now it seems he's just staying in his mid lane, pushing in with the minions here and also making sure Kirk won't be able to jump and do anything. Oh, oh once again, denied. Yeah. That's the thing man, there's so much outplay potential as well in this matchup. See how that one all develops, the double buff there for Peke now as well cause a few problems for Kerp as we see them trying to get in onto Soaz but Giant Spell already picked up by Soaz so he's going to be feeling a lot more confident down on this bottom lane. Meanwhile the top turret does finally get finished off there by the minions and that will put Fnatic in the gold lead by a thousand and look at this dragon just coming up. Fnatic got three men there already. Reckless is on his way from the base but the rest of Millennium is actually already here. Kevin has the passive and teleport ready so you can join in anytime just pick up the fight meanwhile let's see if millennium actually want to go straight for the team fight are they gonna fight this one out it's we teleport. see the teleport coming in there is a nice fallen star. player it locks up two of them as well ulti running from yellow star but peck ain't gonna go down millennium ripping through fanatic at this point the rat attack tap from the side so has going low but fanatic just back away from things they lost the one man dragon didn't go down though such a great engage from Jiri, right on to Xpeke here. We always talk about how Syndra is so immobile. You're not able to jump anywhere unless your flash is off. This time it wasn't cooldown, so just notice Jiri landing onto the slope. Actually, it was just too slow, but then he connects onto him afterwards, stuns him. Here's the kill. Beautiful setup by Jiri, and then Fnatic just have to back away from here. Did force a few flashes away from Millennium, but couldn't actually pick up the dragon. No dragon taken yet, so we'll see if that becomes a bit more of a hot topic here shortly. They've got Kerp and Kevin both on that bottom lane, so definitely possible that they'll go in. We can see Twitch moving down. The other two players coming out of Millennium's base as well. So Source has no teleport yet, and he's up in his top lane here. So only four members from Fnatic actually moving towards the dead. Simply time to give it up here. Don't want to risk anything. There was still no flash on Syndra. And Source instantly just went top lane without teleport ready. Yeah, Peke actually trying to get something back from this one and is going to be able to finish off that outer turret there, Minion's going to come in as well. There's the stun once again. Is Kirk going to keep chasing on this? Does have his blue buff. So there's cooldowns up for him, but didn't want to chase him there. A little bit scared, I think, of running face... Let me try that one again. Face on into Syndra. And Kirk actually flashed. He wanted to flash the stun here and just get the chain on to expect it, but he got stunned at the exact same time he actually flashed, so it didn't work for him. The rest of Millennium were running right behind him, ready to actually kill. Syndra if possible. Still Dragon for Millennium, they lose the mid tower, opens up the lane now for Fnatic, they can get a deep ward in the lane, spot Millennium moving around and of course as we always talk about they can go further into the jungle, especially if they take down this bottom tower with top tower being gone and mid tower, just go into the jungle, get some good wards and try and set up some picks. Yep, and they are going to take this tower as well, Jerry not able to defend that one, Twitch coming in a little bit too late, Crimson not able to help out as the Q from Lee Sin, the binding from Morgana from the other side as well. Both of them actually missing out, but that leaves Fnatic with a healthy gold lead. 12 minutes 44 into the game. Tied up 1 1 in kills, but 3 0 in towers for Fnatic. If both of those dragons didn't go Millennium's way, they'd be in a bit of a sorry position by now. Yeah, it's funny enough, it's something we see very often here in Europe. Actually, one team takes all the towers, but another team just has full focus on dragon and picks up dragon after dragon here. And the teams don't really manage to shut them down or stop them from doing it. I mean, just think back, back to Gambit. Picking up dragons pretty much every game, multiple of them, and it's actually keeping them in the game. Pink Ward taken away from that tribal Yellow Star. Not sure how carefully really needs to be there with Kerp. Obviously, that Athene start 
means he's not going to have masses of damage at this point. We'll certainly will do a lot to the support player. As the pink ward spotted straight out by Millennium, and that will be cleared away. Yellow Star still waiting here for the possibility of maybe getting involved onto Kerper. Stun will be an easy binding for him then. Now, when this top lane here, Kevin going towards the blade as his first item. Source, on the other hand, as we see often from Shivana, going towards some tankiness so he can be really strong in his team fights. And actually sending Reckless back up here to one on one him, but the rest of Fnatic, only Sana and Yellowstar, joining in. All moving in, there's the ultimate out of Cotton. Oh, oh, nice. Max range again from Yellowstar. They're gonna dive on top of Kevin, who has his blood well popped. He's gonna regen about a third of his life when he comes back up, but he's not gonna be able to escape it. Or is he? Reckless actually flashing away there, and Kevin's still alive at the back. So Atlas flashing to try and get him, but they've locked him up. Kurt's gonna yeah. take down Yellowstar for the double, and Kevin manages to live as well. Wow, the bait from Kevin here, the binding landed on him and Fnatic just went all in. Kerb was running the entire time towards the top lane, got in there, instantly killed Cyanide, and then going to take down Yellowstar as well, and Kevin, lucky man. All calculated. Oh, very well played. <laughs> all calculated from him. Meanwhile, Critton's like, well, okay then, uh, I guess I'm not involved True. in this one. I'm just going to farm up and push this bottom lane out there. Obviously moving towards his... Uh, Blade of the Ruin King. Other side, Reckless does already have a Bloodthirster done and dusted. So good for him. Peke, meanwhile, will be getting another spawn on the blue. So overall here, very even in gold. Millennium pulling ahead in the kills and the dragons. But Fnatic controlling the map when it comes to towers. And already been putting a few wards a bit further inside the area of Millennium. Just see if they can spot anything out. But didn't spot out Curb coming up in the last fight here, so he just came up behind him, instantly killed Cyanide, and from there on, it was a lost fight for Fnatic. Yellow Star, you've been landing some very good bindings. Didn't yep. manage to get the blue, however. Max range bindings. As you see, Kriton here, gonna go towards Yellow Star, but... Scrolling up already. Yeah, Both AD up. carries. Both AD carries running that one, and trying to get in there, but unfortunately for him, stealth running out before he could get right on top of Yellow Star. See if he can pull any more of that off. Meanwhile, these top laners, both of them pretty tanky already. We see Chain Vest in there with a Vamp Scepter on top of that Giant's Belt from earlier for Soaz. Other side, we also see a Cutlass and the Giant's Belt as well. And look at this Fnatic trying to set something up in the bottom lane. Is anyone going to show themselves from Millennium? Cutlass coming in as well. They do have to scrying up. They want to try and bait like Fnatic did back in Season 1 at Dreamhack. Creates are moving in. Should we could be the target though? Oh, there's a bind landing going straight to Jerry, but again a brilliant solar plan and turning this one around. Creates are gonna get the first kill and they're gonna keep chasing onto Cyanide. There is one back. It's a two for one down in the bottom lane. And the trap from Fnatic not working as intended. Perfect turnaround for Millennium here. Creaton was just staying in the back the entire time, feeling very safe because they went on to Jerry. Not exactly the ideal target. You wanna either get it on the red or just blow up Connex. Expect it all, going for Kurt. Gonna throw everything out in there, the ultimate as well. Ignite burning away. And there we see it outplayed completely. Expect getting his second kill of the game. Fantastic Syndra play from him. Over and over again in this game, he's just stopping the jumps from Kurt, getting all the damage down, and finally actually managed to pick up a kill with it. Beautiful play. Oh, good. Expect gonna raise his confidence levels moving forward in this, and Kurt. How good of a game is he going to have overall? Millennium pulling out some good plays so far. So Kevin with that escape in the top lane. Is Peke going to spot Jerry over the top of the wall? And then loses his ward just as swiftly as he's put it down. There's oh. the second one. That one will survive, though. We actually see Xpeke here on Syndra building a bit more defensive compared to Kerb. In the start, he felt like he needed the tenacity from his boots because of the CC from Millennium, because he knew he was going to be the target in the team fights where Kerb, of course, just got full damage early on here. Fnatic starting up the Dragon, four members here. Source is going to join in. Millennium is around though, and I do have Teleport. Here we go, Teleport going to come in from Kevin. Can they get into the Jerry going to throw his solar flare to the back of the Dragon Pit. Locks up Peke. Dragon is going to reset here in just a second. In fact, Millennium keep pulling it out there on the pit. Fnatic still waiting up there on the, on the top side. Millennium looking for an opening in this one. It's the top laners that are still at the front. There's Kevin diving in a little bit deep. Does get stunned up, but I think he's going to walk away. Notice Kirby on your minimap. He's trying to sneak around Fnatic to see if he can get in the back line and hit Syndra without the flash. Jerry managed to force the flash before. No ulti on the owner, though. 
Kevin needs to be the guy jumping in. Spotted by a wall. There's a stun missing actually from Peke. They're gonna dive straight towards him. A lot of damage onto Peke. Sinai lets it low. Jerry is gonna fall in this one as well. But look at Kerb pushing around the back time. His Ignite will finish off a kill. And that's a two for one for Millennium. And I'm not sure it's done just yet. Look at this. So has running up the top side. Grinton though doesn't chase. We need to see an Hourglass on Xpeka later in this game here. He's constantly the target for Millennium every single fight. You just see Jerry and Kevin moving straight from. Don't even care about the rest of the team. Just want to go straight for him. No flash, of course. Jumps in, gets the kill. And of course, Kerb was sneaking around the side here. Should be the dragon. Unless Yellowstar is. Uh... Nope. Nope. Will be the dragon for Millennium. Three out of three so far. You see it again. They've got one turret now, though, so. Closing in onto a 2,000 gold lead. Alright, so it is. Mind well, games, it's mind games. Mind games, okay. That's what they call it these days. Trust me. <laughs> we'll see about that. We'll see when he actually realizes. Not sure if he had one earlier and then sold it by accident. I don't know what's going on on that front, but we'll figure that one out as we go along. Cyanide himself just getting that red buff. Got Reckless and Peke starting to move down this bottom side as well. Look at the lanes, that bottom one is pretty much in the middle, although I think it's pushing up towards uh, Creatine's side of the map from this. Jungler on the other side also doing the red buff, so a bit of a, bit of a time to farm now for both sides. Yeah. Dragon of course is gone, so just taking a little bit easy here, no blue buffs up yet. I'm not sure actually if the teams have timers on the blue buffs from the other team and want to maybe try and go for an invade. This Fnatic one just spawned and Millennium is not exactly in a position to try and go for it, so clearly they didn't have it or didn't want to go and force fight the jungle of Fnatic here. Both teams just farming up. Curve, of course, looking towards either his death cap or the Void Stun as the next item. And Xpec is gonna get a death cap himself. He already had the blasting one from before. So he's gonna do a lot of damage, but he's gonna be a very easy target to lock down as well. So, Cyanide did in fact have a trinket at the start of the game, and he's just picked up a sweeping lens now, so. He's aware of I'm that. Telling you, man, mind games. Aware of that one. There's another bind a binding landing from Yellow Star, but no follow up this time. There was no one really there to help him out. And as those blue buffs come in, see Creatin starting off the Millennium one, which will of course be given over towards Kerb. And Peke will be getting his pretty shortly as well. There's a pink ward cleared out. Are they going to go top? No. Notice the pink wards from Millennium, actually. They put so many around this Baron pit in their side of the jungle because they know they want to have Kerb or Aatrox, or even Evelyn or Twitch just sitting around and pr pretty much say anyone from the team, sitting, just waiting around this Baron Pit waiting for someone from Fnatic to go in and clear a ward, and then they can jump them. And as long as they have these pinks, they know there's no wards from Fnatic, and they can try and get a pick through simply better, better ward control. Look at this, bringing Kevin to take out that ward. They've got Cottonex gonna move in for this one as well. Are they gonna try and hunt down Soaz? Was the pink to the ward, and Soaz We'll go in there, take himself that pink wall. Will he be able to get away from it? There's the diving. Connex going to be on top of him as well. So has going to be forced to use his ultimate. He's got no flash, but we'll let him decide not to keep chasing. And actually, he didn't want to use the ult here. He just ran away. Kevin and Connex gave up on the chase here. There was no flash on Kevin. And once he actually landed slow here, just backed away. Not the binding. Yellow Star's accuracy has been very, very oh, good yeah, today. Yeah. No doubt so about that one. We are going to see them coming in. Yellow Star being burst by Kurt. The stun from Peke actually missing. But has he got the damage to finish off? Solar Flare comes in. They're going to go towards Peke here. Well, they've not got the damage. Or have they? Creatine coming Creatine in from the side. Cyanide is going to go down. Wow. And even nearly got Peke on his way as well. Great, great play by Creatine here. Popping up himself. Dodging the stun as well from Fnatic. And then he just kills them. Such a smart play and such a good play by Creatine. And set up by Kurt in the start going towards Yellow Star. Kevin there going very, very deep. He's got Connex coming in as well. There's no flash for Soaz still. And there is a Zen in place and it breaks Jerry against the wall. Soaz is going to have to try Kirby's and kill himself. Kerp is going to be moving through. Where's Soaz going to go? Trying to recall yet right in the middle of the lane. He's going to be spotted or is he? Not quick enough. It was a TP he used. Well, so TP down at least. Millennium should know. Have the time on it. Or at least try and time it. Can just pick up a top tower. Didn't get the kill, so got a top tower, and they all, already pick up a few kills in the mid lane, so they can't really complain. Okay, and Kerp again. Kerp actually diving into this one, and half health almost taken away. There's a death cap now on both of those mid laners. So much damage from both of them if they can actually get a target. It's just so much easier for LeBron to jump in, pick whatever target you want, and just jump back again. 
where Cinder you basically go all in. I mean, there's, you can just go in and say, ah, with Charget, no, I'm not sure, I'm just gonna back out again. No, because the enemy team is gonna be on you instantly to try to kill you. So, harder for Pekka to pick a target here. Kirby can see him just jump around all the time, poking away now. Person coming in, in stealth. Oh, there we go, dash forward, slow, actually missing from Critzen, and they're gonna try and turn this one back around. Where's the stun out here from Pekka? He already used it a few seconds ago, then Carnex moving in as well. But I think still need to be a little bit careful around this mid lane. Peke's got his flash back up, so a bit more safety for him. But the fact is, with two possible invisible threats there, you always got to be really careful. It's a scary thing because it requires you to have a lot of pink wards in right positions. If you actually want to spot them, come towards you. Especially the gank through the mid lane from Twitch is so hard to predict. Because again, if you put a pink ward in the middle of the lane, our team is just going to walk in and clear it, and therefore you won't be able to spot the Twitch coming unless you place him even further back in the lane and you can see him start his stealth once he actually comes into the mid lane. Fnatic though haven't been able to move so far into the area of Millennium for the last few minutes because Millennium actually has been finding the right picks here and getting the kills. Not team fights, but going straight just for picks the last few minutes. And now Dragon coming up in about 25 seconds, or actually 25 seconds by now, so Millennium could be looking for a team fight again. The last one, two for one for Millennium and a Dragon. Saw that scrying off, use this middle inner turret taking a bit of a beat in there. That was just cleared out by Kerb. Oh, we've got just over 10 seconds. Yellowstar done a good job here of clearing out those wards. Millennium gonna leave the dragon and make a play on middle. They, of course, have had 100% of the dragon so far. Three out of three. Can't see them giving it up, that's for sure. No, definitely not. They can just stay around, try and clear some wards away from Fnatic and maybe find the target. I mean, even Sana at this point is very, very squishy. Kerb can blow him up instantly. Kreaton will be able to do the exact same thing. So they'll pretty much only have Source who can actually survive the burst from Millennium. And he's up in his top lane, in his one-on-one -on -one with Kevin and looking to teleport in while the fight is actually happening already. What are they going to do here? Kerb actually going aggressive onto Yellowstar, misses the chain, but just jumps right back into position from where he came from. It's a good bit of damage done. May force Yellow Star to back away and think twice about getting involved in this next fight. There's a binding going through. That's a big stun onto him. Oh, no follow-up damage. No follow-up damage onto Kerb. And he continues to live. Tense moment here. 25 minutes, 50 seconds into the game. Dragon is live. There's a war from Fnatic in the back of the pit, but Millennium has started off the Dragon. Starting the Dragon here. Four members moving in. Source putting a lot of pressure to Kevin in his top lane here. Sana, he got it! Oh, he got it! He strikes again. The Steel Master oh, is he going to go down. Go. Summon the heal comes in. Solar Flare at the back. And Cyanide comes up big again for Fnatic. Millennium wondering what's hit them. Here's a TP as well from Soaz. Fnatic going to go for the tower. So Kevin actually tried to teleport up in his top lane here, but Source stopped him with his ulti and then TP'd himself down to join the team, taking the tower now. Sanai, that was absolutely perfect. You got the dragon, you got out as well, and now also the mid tower. And this was supposed to be Millennium's dragon. I mean, four members around it, and yet he steals it. And he's done it so many times. Yeah, he must be up there with, if not the biggest stealer in yeah. League of Legends history. Pulled off some monumental ones in the past. At least Fnatic just a hundred or so gold behind that of Millennium at this point. Still 9 4 in kills. We still see Creatin's going to be a massive threat. 3 0 3 for him. Got himself that uh, static ship on top of his Blade of the Rune King and a Last Whisper in there now. And that's the thing about Cold Squishy. Actually, let's just see once again. Sinai going in, gets the steal and gets out of the wall. I think he needs to heal from Dragon Zack to survive. Teleport, you see it coming in from Kevin here, but because Source stops him off in the top lane, he will never be able to join the fight, and Source can then join in himself, force Millennium away. Even, going not the wrong way around, but pretty much the only way they could actually do towards the base, therefore Fnatic could take the mid tower. And Cotton X left. Little red face, I think, after that one. Smite still available for him. Cyanide coming out on top of that little battle. So let's have a look down some more items. Trinity Force was collected by Reckless. Yellow Star now in the back of the pit, needs to be real careful here. Kerb sniffing around for a chance to pick up his fourth kill. They've got Cotton X there, Creedson's just off to the side as well. And Yellow Star wisely, I think, backing off into his own jungle. Yeah, don't want to take a chance, don't want to be caught up. Going for Pekka! Solar Flare coming in onto him, but Pekka just flashes away, flashes completely out of the danger zone. A Cyanide taking a lot of damage, Jiri also falling low from that one, and no kills out of all that. 
But this is a Millennium we actually like to see, but they're very, very aggressive. Yesterday against Rocket, they just stayed back, they waited for Rocket to make the moves, and then they tried to react to it and counter, counter it. This time around, it's just Millennium going down. Oh, are you standing at the tower? We just got engaged in time. Get a kill onto you, and Kerb is playing so aggressive on LeBlanc as well. See Kevin moving down, they want this tower for their third of the game. And we want them a good chunk of gold ahead, 1,000 gold. Just not really that much when we're almost 30 minutes into this game. And look at it, Millennium moving now possibly down towards that bottom side. Peke though coming around the side. There's Kirk diving in. Ultimate being used by Peke. Not quite enough damage to finish off. No, it's it's so okay. from the side. And this is going to be bad news for Millennium. First kill coming down. Kevin still having a good go. Kirk actually is very low as well. Half HP for him as the Bloodwell gets popped. Reckless completely untouched on this top side. Is real bad news. Love is actually Valkyrie in. It may have gone a little bit Got too it. deep. What or is he just going to mop up the kill? Get two. Can he find any more scrying old views that gives the vision of Creighton, but he's away to his tower. And everything here was set up by Source. What an ulti into Millennium. He hit multiple members, and Reckless just came in from the side here, where it actually was a pink ward from Fnatic. Just stood there and just kept shooting from the side with all his area damage on Corgi here. We keep talking about how the mid game point of Corgi is so strong. I mean, this is the time where he really shines. He has the Blood First, yeah. he has the Trinity Force, just doing so much damage to everyone here in this team fight. Great counter engage from Source. Such a good TP first, and then he just jumps in. Did he even TP? No, he didn't actually TP, he just ran up. He just ran up, was in that uh, bottom lane. Yeah. Just did a loop around by the back of that dragon pit, and perfect ultimate right into the middle of the team. So, the gold has swung once again. Only 200 or so, 300 ish, uh, is the lead for Millennium. And we've got just under two minutes until this next dragon comes in. Last one stolen away by Cyanide. Should have probably been a Millennium oh, Dragon, yeah. fourth of the game, but. Not how it works for them, unfortunately, and they'll be a little bit more cautious about it this time. And while we talked about the hourglass earlier, could be built on Syndra to make Expected survive the fight, we have to say the same thing about Millennium here. While they have a lot of damage on the two carries, Twitch and Lubong, they are both very, very squishy, and if a binding lands onto one of them, or if Sana can kick one of them into the team, they will die instantly. I mean, we saw just before, Kerb jump forward towards Expected here. He just used his ult in his face and took about 60% damage or 60% HP away from Kerb instantly. It's just one or two hits from Reckless and Kerb is dead at the point. So both teams playing with very squishy carries here and both teams with so much damage. There's some very scary team fights. Fnatic all up in Millennium's jungle at this point, getting some real deep wards in there in preparation for this dragon coming up. And look at this, Reckless, Cyanide and Yellowstar now gonna set themselves a bit of a trap. Bit of deja vu from before, we'll have to see. That ward at the Wolf Camp will spot Cotton X, but he's already sped on out of that one. But Millennium needs to be careful in that side of the jungle. Fnatic is actually pinging the Baron at the moment, saying we are so many members on this bottom side of the map here. If Millennium has a ward on us or they know we're around here, they could be starting over Baron. However, Source, of course, is going and checking, making sure nothing's going on. Goes back up to this top lane here and there. Now. Once again, Kerb denied though. But Flame, they want to fight. Yeah, but Peke is not going to get he killed him though. when he did get the kill onto Kerb before he went down. And there we just see the potential out of both of these players. The fact that they are super squishy, but masses and masses of burst damage. Yeah, we see the same idea again for Millennium. They stealth up here, of course, with Evelyn, with the Twitch. And then Kerb, he can just double jump with his ulti. Get in range of Syndra. Try and get the kill here, but this time... Pekka just turned it around and traded one for one. It's a beautiful play. Dragon is alive. Both mid laners are dead for still over 20 seconds at least for Pekka. Are we going to see? Yeah, that four oh, versus yellow. four here for Dragon. Kevin actually coming down. Yellow Star. He's going to be running in the middle of them. But Jerry's been focused. Kevin dives right into the middle. That'll be a one for one for now. But Kevin will get locked up by the ultimate. Cyanide down at half HP. Dashes off to the ward. And that will be another one for one trade. However, I don't think it's over because the mid laners have just spawned back in, or Peke will be up in a couple of seconds. That dragon's still alive. Sana, he has a flash, staying around for now. No, he's actually going to back away here. Millennium traded the support for the AD carry. Reckless, he was caught in the middle of the whole fight. Kevin just jumped instantly to him, knocked him off here, and therefore, with all the AoE from Kurt on the world, they could kill him. Jaria, I believe, was also on to Reckless here, locking him down. So, multiple members focusing him, and he went down. So, trading one for one. However, Dragon again from the venue. Another Dragon. Leaves them close to 2k in the lead. We'll see how that helps them in 
these next encounters. We've gone past the halfway point. <laughs> halfway point. Maybe the halfway Maybe. point. The half an hour point, at least, is where we're at. And again, those items pouring in. We see a couple of Randuins. In fact, both top laners, both junglers, got their Randuins omens done right now. It seems actually... We're gonna get a Banshee's Veil on maybe both mid laners at the moment. Which would be very, very smart because again, both of them are all about the upfront burst they can do. So the Banshee's gonna block some of it. Also gonna give them the needed matching resist to try and survive some of the fights here. So Kreton is gonna be an issue and also Reckless when it comes to just straight out damage on the mid laners. See Pecky. Getting the ball off to the side and Kurt playing a little bit dangerously there. But look at this Kevin. Gonna be a target for Fnatic, so as in Cyanide there, but as I said before, Kevin is pretty damn tanky already at this point, and there we see him just kind of jump away, Randu in slow, was used by Soaz, but Kevin not in any danger there. Jumps away, Flash of course still ready, Kreson once again still think of in his mid lane, looking for a target. Perky actually going off to the side there, and they may be able to catch Yellow Star. now Kreson is going to show himself, Binding comes through, but doesn't have the range and right direction to actually land onto anyone. Now, Fnatic are actually pulling everyone down towards this mid lane, so we could see a big head-to-head -head fight here shortly. So I'm clearing out those wards as Jerry gets them in. And we see how risky it is for Fnatic to push further up than the river here, because again, they don't have enough deep wards in the jungle of Millennium to actually spot Kraton stealth, except for the one ward here at the Wraith camp, hoping to either spot him out or Codnex. But now, if they feel like they get a time to actually move up, get a few deeper wards, take a few more confident moving forward, maybe try and set up a bait, turn everything around and get a kill onto Kreaton or Kurt, and then use it to take the Baron. For now though, they played very smart, just backing away when they didn't have any vision. Okay, that's smart, you say. Oh, Connex actually getting stunned up. This is surely a kill for Peke! Ignite is down, and there is a shutdown coming in very nice. Yeah, to smart. Connex, but I, I say smart. One for one, both jungles down. Cyanide. All planned. Yeah. I don't know. That's it? Yeah. I'm not sure. I'm not sure how I'm not sure that is in but the grand scheme. The thing is, he tried to do the thing we just talked about. He wanted to get in inside or deeper inside Millennium Jungle, get a few wards. They were just waiting for him. Instantly died. He doesn't have a lot of magic resistance at this point, so Kerb can really destroy him. Look at this. Jerry headed top side of the map as well. Will be spotted out. Why that tribush ward though, so so as not gonna have any problems and sadly for him his vision runs out at exactly the wrong time for him to get that vision control back. Meanwhile, Peke gonna be recalling in the mid lane. Let's see how much gold he's sat on. Actually sat on about two thousand gold at this point, so that's a needlessly large rod, a second one picked up for him. So he can get both the Banshee and the Outlast, unless of course he wants to go DFG with this large rod here and just Full on focus on person, whatever target even comes close to him. We've already seen he doesn't need the DFG track to kill Kerb. At least not maybe one, two hits extra from someone else and he's dead already as long as they pop the Banshees first. But we need to see what he wants to do with the large rod, if it's going to be DFG or Hourglass. Well, DFG won't give him that extra burst, but leaves him just as squishy as he is now. That Sonya's may just come in handy. We talk about the mobility all the time of Cinderus. We are going to see him dive in towards Yellow Star. Oh, Binding flashed coming out, flashed away, but Millennium not able to get on there and get the killing blows. Meanwhile, Peke and Reckless coming in from around the side. Where's oh, the stun? The missed hit. in wide. Not, not going to offer any opportunities there for Fnatic. Close though. So no flash on Twitch now. Could be the target for Fnatic in this next team fight. Kreaton once again though, moving in with the rest of the team. And it's always the same place Millennium stand with Twitch. And just stealth up and then move into the mid lane. Fnatic have learned the lesson and they always back away. Oh, Kerb dives in there. Yellow Star goes low. Keep it behind. Can't finish him. Kevin's going to come in from the side and Jerry dives in as well. Solar Flare will lock them too. But jerry has gone far too deep all on his own. And it was a good idea in theory, but in practice, he went horribly wrong for Millennium. But again, give a cookie to Source. He stops the TP from Kevin coming behind Fnatic and collapsing onto them. Once again, he's the guy. He stops the Reaper's ulti. His own TP is still ready. And he also got a kill. Oh, Kurt, trying to keep Fnatic busy from the lane side. But where are they going? Aren't they going Baron? Got a pink one in there. Millennium got still no risky, vision though. of it. Still risky. It's only the support being dead from Millennium. Remember, they're actually just baiting it. They want Millennium to face check them. Oh, well, stone on towards Kevin and Fnatic seeing that hit actually decided to go in towards them. Ultimate actually going to be used there by Peck. They were not doing much damage and now he's stuck on the top side. Kevin going to rip through him. And that is one kill for nothing. Can they get any more here though? Kevin is 
going to move in. That was the Mimic from Kerp, who went very, very low from that. We'll be recalling here for a nice little pickup. But again, we see the problem with Syndra. No flash. You've got nothing to really help you survive. I'm playing with a bit caught on different sides of the Baron Pit here. A few members were still around there in the Dragon or Baron Pit, actually. Other members had already jumped over. It's a bit of a split up fight for him, and the ulti was actually used from Max Beckett onto Connex just as he used his own ulti, so it blocked pretty much everything. He took no damage from it. Still, though, Fnatic going with Boobo here. Just be careful. I like this crowd. I really like this crowd. Dragon is live as well. And we see Millennium starting out. Down to half HP, half Fnatic gonna have a go at it. I don't think they are, so as is gonna try for a cheeky steal, uh, steal off the side. Didn't quite work out for him that way. Millennium get themselves another Dragon. Five, Five out of six. six. Doing fantastic on that front. Yeah, every time they are the first one there, even the one they actually lost, there were four members around the Dragon, so I've managed to steal it. And just been controlling this Dragon area for the entire game as always. Staying around with all these pick champions here like the Twitch, the Evelyn and the LeBong to just catch out targets from Fnatic. So they never really want to move in and try and get some wards and therefore Millennium just had full control of the whole thing. I picked up so much gold from these dragons. Again, we have to remember it gives even more gold here in the late game parts. More and more as you go on and yet still though, only 2,000 gold leads. So it's not a massive lead that Millennium have. Here's Peke. Good ward from him. Actually will be spotted out by Jay Reed and he's going to have a vision to get rid of that. Which means they know that Millennium are there, but Fnatic have a problem in that they've got no wards down Baron. Someone's going to have to go and change that. Let's see. Yellowstar moving in. is putting the first ward to see who's around for Millennium here, of course. Very important bush in the middle, but Kerb is waiting. It's the one that really wants to get warded, and Sana did. Oh, throwing it onto him. The chain does land, but not quite enough to finish off. Enough to burst him down. It's Yellowstar. Going to get Dove on. Nope, not quite. Kerb can't get in there. Get the slow down though. Meanwhile, Cornex actually stormed through the enemy jungle. He's gonna find Cyanide here by the big ray. Just gonna smite that one away. Steals it right from under Cyanide's nose. So Fnatic managed to actually get Millennium away from this choke point around the Baron where they had all the wards. Millennium though, just going straight back in. They need to clear the these two wards out. And just trying to do the exact same thing. Wait for Fnatic to come in and ward it. See if they can find a pick with Kirby. He's actually already positioning himself pretty much the same place as before. Pop the Banshee though. We need to be a little bit careful now. Nice black shield coming out from Yellow Star though to stop that chain getting in the stun. Oh, so that's going to be caught a little bit out of position on this one, but tankiest man on the team doesn't lose too much health. There's a stun onto Kevin as well, but no follow up again from Fnatic. And look at this, Cottonex trying to get around the back. He's going to be spotted by the pink. Well, that is a big stun as the Solar Flag goes in. They go in for Cyanide, but he's able to safeguard away. Meanwhile, Cottonex now coming in from the side. Kevin is there as well. Big stuns again coming out from Peke, and they're going to go for it. Crimson, though, gets the Rampage here as they finish off Lee Sin. They can't keep chasing this one now, surely. And this was not the right time for Fnatic to teamfight. A lot of their members, especially both x Peke and Reckless, have over 70 oh. gold. Oh, he popped, he died. But still, Corky and Syndra at this point, they have over 1,700 gold in the back here. They need to use it, go back and get some very important items. But because Millennium had all the pressure around Baron, they could never recall. They knew Millennium could just take the Baron in. So they were forced into a bad team fight. Ended up in two kills for Millennium and the Baron. Bad team fight. Baron goes down. Millennium now having stronger control. Still, just a 4,000 gold lead. Not a massive one still, as we see Peke answering our question. Went for the DFG. Went okay. for the DFG. We really need to see if he can just blow up a target here or if he's just going to die instantly in the fight. Personally, again, if you have very good positioning, if your flash is ready, DFG is just fine because, again, you can do so much damage. Reckless, on the other hand, went for the Blade of the Rune King actually here, so he wants to be able to try and survive a little bit by himself. He knows he can also be the target for Millennium to lock down. Well, will definitely take that opportunity if you let him get close enough to Corky. That Valkyrie may be enough though to keep Reckless safe. Look at this Kerb. Gonna come around and actually he's what? gonna find Reckless! Wow, masses of damage again. Reckless thinking he's safe, tucked away behind the corner. You're never safe from Kerb. You're never safe. There's a very good ward from Millennium down here. Fnatic now, they just need to hold off. This Baron buff here. Should be about two and a half minutes left on it. 
comes out of Millennium. As long as they can wave clear like this, it's gonna be fine. So, very big wave on this top lane here. Millennium instantly moving towards it. Kevin, a bit behind, has teleport though. Same goes for Jiri, without teleport. Uh, I'm not sure they can stop this one. I no, don't no. think they're even gonna try. Actually, they are gonna try, but they're a little bit too late to that party. Crimson able to finish off the tower. Meanwhile, Kevin pushing down this middle lane as well. A fanatic torn between top lane and middle lane. Here we go again, Kurt around the side. Doesn't follow through though, just been a constant pain for them really more than anything else. There we see a solar flag coming in, they're gonna go for Peke, he's, he's still dead. gonna go down, Kevin gets that kill, they get away as well from Yellow Star's ultimate, that's two kills and the tower, I'm not sure they can hold the Indian tower. And Millennium, they have so much engage and so much mobility to just get to the back down of Fnatic every single time, again this is between two towers, don't even care, just use Leona ult to start it, Kevin jumps in, Kerb joins in, Kratom with the long range with his ulti from the backside, and of course Codnex is speeding himself up, joining in as well. Everyone from Millennium can just come in and do damage to the squishy members of Fnatic every time. They cannot hold this turret. Look at that again, Kerb. Turning right up in Yellow Star's face, He's just come back in and already lost a big chunk of health. And there is the first inhibitor going down for Millennium. Are oh, they going to have another go? Again, Kerb there. Right at the very front, trying to keep Fnatic away from them. The wave's going to be pushed up by Creaton, and they're going to be knocking on the top side. Uh, as long as this Banshee's up on Kurt, he can just keep jumping in. He doesn't have to fear the stun or the binding. They need to pop it. There we go. The rocket from Reckless. Now he needs to be a little bit careful. Still, Millennium. Just focusing on the towers. Very low already. Almost getting that one down as well. Still not sure how Kurt manages to pull that kind of play right. with a trackball. Not sure either. Not sure either. He's definitely, I mean, in Champs League, we actually said Zix was his most consistent champion. I think LeBlanc has to be up there with it. So many strong players. Well, it doesn't on this get to play it, right? Uh, often ban away, very true. Very true. Oh, and here he is once again. Right, getting the Anakin fall out on his wave. Pushing through. You see, a little bit scared of getting involved on it, but Branches nails back up across the board. Maybe just one more minion wave would be enough here for Millennium to break that second tower. Kevin also hit the point where he gets really annoying to deal with. Garden Angel, his own passive of course. We have to kill him multiple times now, so he can buy so much time for the rest of Millennium. Even if they just want to run away, it's a bad fight, he can stay there and buy time for him. Connex, putting out his ping here, opening up now for both him and Kreaton to maybe try and sneak in behind Fnatic. Keeping that out of the side, Millennium with four men on the top lane, trying to hold on to that inventory that's already so very, very low there. He's Kurt just dashing in, single auto attack, and he can just do that over and over again. Eventually, it's going to go down. Look at Karnex still waiting there in that middle lane, maybe looking to jump on someone. Will he go for Reckless? I'm sure it's really a fight he wants to take, but he's probably going to open up that turret even if he just runs in there. He's simply waiting for the tower to actually go down up here, and then if they want to fight, he can sneak in behind them without Fnatic expecting it, and just full on engage. So they have their full focus on this lane, or these minions pushing down here, clear the minions, want to defend the tower for as long as possible. They wouldn't even think Connex is actually sitting behind them. Kevin's line actually get it behind and the kick Chris in it! Chris is gonna go down, but it's a one for one up until now. There is the shutdown. So has has to flash away. Carnix coming in too late. Nice Another binding from Yellow Star will give them a second kill. Such a great play by Cyanide, sacrificing himself just to kick Kreson back into the team. They knew there was no flash on them. There we of course we got to see the DFG blowing Kreson up instantly with the rest of Fnatic. What? Millennium. Not done Still yet. Still that tower. Still gonna push that one down. Couple more auto attacks will do it. And it comes from Curb in the end. So they lost the men, but they stuck around and fight the tower. Yeah. <laughs> Fighting so hard for this tower here. Well, killed six and a half thousand gold leads here for Millennium. You see that the gold difference. Basically coming from Peke's farm, 434 yeah. farm that he's racked up. We've also got the Baron coming up in one and a half minutes as well. So he's always been one of the best farmers, while Kerb, again, he's the, actually the mid laner in Europe with the lowest average CS per game. He gets all his gold from objectives and from kills. We of course expect it now, be we see it again. As long as you have a lot of farm, you will be ahead in gold here in this case. So he's doing a very good job farming up. He's been doing it throughout the entire game actually. Only a few times where he caught out in the mid lane, otherwise he's been staying around farming and just always backing away from 
A little bit too close there. Dragon Cup been up for a while here. And Fnatic gonna go in for that one. A valuable prize. Almost 50 minutes into this game. Definitely worth it coming out of the base. The question now is though, can they stop this Baron going over to Millennium? We actually see as well on Syndra now. He sold his bench, uh, sold his Negatron. Designed to go for the Outlast now, so no, he needs it to survive all the bursts coming in. There's going to be a lot of damage on the side of x here. He can really destroy everyone. And has in fact just completed that Sonya's Hourglass as well, so that's going to be ready for this next Baron fight. If there even is a Baron fight, we'll see what Fnatic are feeling about that scenario. Blaze getting pushed in once again. Fnatic keeping that middle wave as far out as possible. The inhibitor has respawned in that one now. And look at this Kirk waiting again, trying to catch someone out. There's a huge sign that takes a bit of damage, but not really masses. Baron is up here, Source down his bottom lane. They can just start the Baron here and then disengage from it once the teleport comes in from Source just to force them away from this bot tower here. Unless Fnatic is moving way too slow, then Millennium can just pick out the Baron for free. So us. Is he coming? No, it's too late. No. Way too late. Fnatic, the rest wow. of the team weren't even in position, so there was no reason for him to actually teleport there. So, so as will be getting himself a turret here in that bottom lane, which is all well and good, but they lose the Baron now. And that's going to mean more pressure onto them in these coming minutes. We've already seen that Millennium not scared of diving in between towers if they feel their engage is strong enough. Still, they need to be careful now they don't get baited by this outlast and just go all in once again onto XPEC and think, yeah, he's an easy target, we just lock him down. He outlasts and you waste so much focus and time by trying to kill him. Where Fnatic can then try and turn things around. So, of course, one thing we also have to mention is AD carry wise, Twitch late game compared to Korki is definitely heavily in favor of, of Millennium and also one of the reasons they have been so strong in the few actual team fights we had. It's been more about picks left and right, which was. Which was what we expected from Millennium's comp here. But also at this point, even team wise the Twitch is just such a strong team. Well, Millennium are now finally marching down this middle lane. Because he never did respawn. But will Fnatic be able to defend it? Will he try to defend this one? All it takes is one spot on solar flare from Jay Ree. And this game could be all over. We're over the 50 minute mark now as Kevin going to jump away. He did get hit with the binding. We see a bit of apprehension, I think, from Millennium's side. Playing a little bit careful. I mean, they did give up two kills in the last team fight. Still, they're Baron, and they're basically waiting for some poke to land first from Curve. You need to be careful, though. Kevin is taking quite some damage. So, as we said, Garden Angel and passive. Yeah. Got to kill him three times. Not exactly ideal. Curve continues to be the annoyance. Off to the side, he's actually going to clear out both of those wards that were thrown over. But yellow Star. Gonna have another one to just throw straight in there in just a second. Meanwhile, the wave's finally coming back up. But what are Fnatic gonna go for? Kerp actually diving over the top of the wall and again going for Soaz and just slowly but surely chipping away. Even on the tankiest when you see that Soaz, third of his HP gone like that. Yeah, and the old here from the bong in the late game, such a short cooldown. It's already gonna be ready in just a few seconds for him. So you can try and do the exact same thing. It is ready for him now in case he wants to jump in again. Showing himself there. Poke is going to be strong. And that long range stun from Peke oh. can be a problem. Half health gone. That surely is a sign here for Millennium to move in. Good stun back from Peke, but they can't hold this one. And it's going down. Just a little bit of Poke and they feel confident enough to move in. And Fnatic has to back away. Now they can try and do the exact same thing for the second in here. And Evelyn actually waiting off to the side. Oh, that's that going in. It's gone a bit too deep, but actually gets away. Jerry dives into the middle of the Kevin will go in as well. They've killed Peke. They're going to kill off Cyanide. That's a double kill for Creative. There's okay. another one coming in for Kerb. And this is going to be the game for Millennium. Only Reckless and Yellow Star left available to try and defend the base. You see them there both sat on the Nexus itself, but can they hold it? I don't think so. Five men from Millennium with the Baron here. And there we see instantly those turrets being shredded down. The first one will fall. Reckless and Yellow Star have all but backed away from this one. Millennium going to finish off the base and pick up a much needed win here over Fnatic. Such a strong performance by Millennium. And such a difference in performance compared to yesterday against Rocket where they were so passive. But this time around, Curve had a good start, Curzon had a good start, the entire team just went with it and started finding picks left and right here and kept the gold lead going. And also we have to touch on the Dragons. 
pretty much every single one was picked up by Millennium and just managed to extend the goal lead over and over. And then because that's so much engaged onto an immobile mid laner from Fnatic, they could kill him so many times in these early team fights. And we saw a very similar scenario just to go back to the Dragon's point there. You think back to the Gambit versus Alliance game where Alliance were doing it all right, but took all those early towers, yeah. got a good few kills in there. But Gambit were able to hold on to the Dragons and Millennium doing a very, very similar thing here. In fact, I think Fnatic only got two Dragons, one of which was a steal from Cyanide. Exactly, and one was very late in the game after they picked up the two kills in the fight, they went for Dragon. So overall, it's just a very good performance by, by Millennium, showing exactly also how to play. With this Twitch here, we saw it was the same position in mid lane every time where he stands, stealths, moves in, sees is there anyone from Fnatic nearby. If there is, he pops out, does a lot of damage, forces and summoner, and they have, have to back away here. And overall, just a very, very strong performance by Millennium. And this weekend's performance just highlights the inconsistency yeah, again of Millennium. Think back to the game against Rockat. Basically, didn't even turn up to play. They nope. weren't really involved in that game. And then we see how they just destroyed Fnatic there. I also have to question we know Millennium love these pick comps, they do well with them. But is that enough? Is that diverse enough to win enough games in the season? So, as long as people keep giving them key picks for the pick comp, of course it's going to work for them. And it's actually a very good point you make because every time they play pick comps, it works really well. When they went 2 0 last week, it was the same deal pick comp all around Fist, I believe, and Twisted Fate for. For Kerb. And that's the thing about Kerb at least. He has a very big champion pool, so it's actually hard to bang yeah. him out. And he will always be able to take some kind of assassin and try to make it into a pick comp. Therefore, it's gonna be hard to shut it down unless people kind of see the pattern in the way Millennium plays them, put a lot of focus on shutting down Kerb early on in the mid lane, stop him from being able to roam around, and therefore stop the whole what well, should we say pick comp from working for Millennium. Mm. And also, of course, knowing where to ward exactly against the likes of a Twitch so they won't get caught out of position. Well, massive win there for Millennium over Fnatic. Let's join Shops on stage where she's standing by with Millennium's Kevin. Thanks very much, guys. Now, uh, Kevin, the commentators actually touched on it already. <laughs> I you get an applause. Let's go. <laughs> so the commentators touched on it already, that inconsistency for Millennium, because where was this aggressive team yesterday? Yesterday, um, we had two days where we didn't scrim, actually. We should have scrimmed. I think we are a team that has to scrim before a game. Because uh, yesterday in the game, we were just not on the same page. Like um, the four guys, when they were the second dragon, for example, they were just not on the same page, and they just couldn't go. Um, this game, though, when everything um, like planned, we had a little bit struggle because of the fat Corky um, in the early, but um, we managed that perfectly, I think. So uh, yeah, we are just super happy that we beat such a comp as well. Yeah, talk me through that, because well, it is a pretty annoying comp to beat. We had that Cinder Blanc matchup again that didn't work too well for Kerp yesterday, so how did you work around that? Um, well, we had yesterday uh, Cinder as well, yes. Um, yesterday we played the team fights bad, as I said, so Cinder could, couldn't really show her potential in a team fight. But um, this game, we shut her down instantly. We picked uh, aggressive champions, which we are so comfortable on, with Leona, with uh, Atrox even. Um, yeah, we've just all, all go in. So um, I think that's that's our play style and that's what we are good in. Just go and go hum and kill everyone. So uh, we are just happy that we beat an co annoying comp as well because it's so much poke and so much annoying stuff around you. Well, uh, indeed a, a nice victory for you guys here once again. But, you know, I got to put you on the spot a little bit. It seems that every time I talk to you, it's when you had a bad game, then you had a good game as they touch on that inconsistency. Mm. I feel like you guys need to step it up going in the rest of the season, so how do you guys plan on doing that? Um, we will just practice as we did. I think it's good. We have uh, an analyst. We, we finally uh, we, we have a lot of structure right now in our uh, practice as well. We are winning more than 50% in scrims, which I believe it. So, uh, <laughs> um, and yeah, that's how we have to keep on with the inconsistency. We, I think we aren't that inconsistent. We just didn't prepare yesterday really good, and that's our fault, and that's why we lost yesterday, basically. All right, well, uh, finally, I mean, you got to do it for all of these fans over here that come out to watch you guys. Um, is there anything you want to say about the London crowd? If you just have some cheer for a second. So, yeah, uh, just a big thanks to everyone who's here and uh, cheering for Millennium. Not sure if there's anyone, actually, Kappa, but... Um, that there is actually, so 
I'm just happy to be here. It's a new experience again for me, and I, I just love to be here. You played out in your mind as well. Thank you very much, and congratulations. Now, that was it from us here, and the talk with Kevin. We're going to break down the game with Demon and Trevor. Thank you very much, Shox, and welcome back, everyone. So, Millennium move to third place in the league now, clearly setting themselves aside. And we want to go straight back to the start, the picks and bans in the beginning of that game. A couple of choices to go with straight away, immediately, Cindra LeBlanc, once again. So, this is the first time I've seen Cindra into LeBlanc in Europe, where I haven't gone, that didn't yeah. work. Uh, Pekka out farm Kerb by a massive margin. He was containing him. They traded one for one, and that was the first time you could really see the mechanical level of a Syndra player matching up against LeBlanc. Interestingly, Kevin playing not Irelia for the first time in five games. He had four back to back to back on Irelia. And I also want to consider, had the Syndra not been Syndra and been swapped to a Twisted Fate, it may have counted Evelyn, it may have counted Twitch. There was some discussion about whether or not that pick was really ideal because there wasn't a lot of damage on the Fnatic squad. And it's not only the Cinder, it's also the Twitch. You've got to think, they went with Lee Sin as the first pick option, of course, for Cyanide, but it left LeBlanc and Twitch open, which Millennium, of course, picked up. And they were the big game changers in this match. Yeah, they really, really were. The one thing that I really liked about the Evelyn uh, that was locked in by Cottonex a little later is how he backed up his teammates. The yeah. first replay that we've got, if we pull that up onto your screens right now, is Fnatic making a play onto Kevin. They tried to shut him down. Let's roll this clip out. And what I want you guys to keep your eyes on is the mini-map. You'll notice that Cottonex is trying to save Kevin, delaying the attack. But look at Kerb. Look at Jay Reed. They're coming in for support. And all of a sudden, this 3v1, after the blood well is popped, now becomes an advantageous situation for Millennium. The burst damage is great, and Jay Reed with an incredible flash Zenith Blade. He ends up saving Kevin's life, so it's two for zero. That was the kills and the goal that Kerp needed to just start accelerating finding picks. But the thing is, they did trade picks back and forth often throughout this entire game. It was very exciting to watch. Yeah, it just showed how close these two teams were. And you could tell, actually, that they do practice against one another quite a lot in this matchup. But another fight that broke out very close, but again, it was the LeBlanc making the picks. Yes, and again, an Evelyn with a flank. Let's pull that second replay up onto your screen. This comes in a little later in the game, but the, before we start, 40 minutes in, there's only 2,000 gold that separates these teams. Millennium had great dragon control, but Fnatic were farming like absolute machines. Let's roll this clip out and keep your eye on Cottonex's position. He's going to get a great three-man flank with that Agony's embrace. Comes in from the sideline, is going to just split up Fnatic. You'll see that uh, Reckless is just miles away out of the fight. And I love the burst damage that comes onto Creaton in just a moment here. Very good plays. Uh, we do see that Sunknight unfortunately gets popped out, which happened a few times. Let's roll this clip through at normal speed, just so we can see the final pick. And basically, every single time an engage happened, Millennium had the single target damage and CC to find a pick, which got them a little further ahead and Kerb would close it out. Yeah, such fantastic play. All out with a trackball, who would have thought? So Millennium now in clear third place. Of course, it means Fnatic fall down to fourth place, equal with Super Hot Crew. How do we see these teams leveling out? We're about halfway through the season now. Millennium needs to play something other than pick comps. I'm going to keep calling them out. They keep playing pick comps. And yes, it's working for them, but they played pick against quasi-pick from Fnatic and came out ahead. If Fnatic had had better map control, those picks may not have happened. Well, we need to take a quick caster cooldown, and when we return, it will be time for our last match of the day. It's going to be Alliance facing off against the Copenhagen Wolves. We're going to be right back. Vandal Twitch, guys. I will go ham this game. Of course you will. It's play and play. I think I'm going to be the main target. Otherwise, I'm going to carry the game. Oh. <laughs> Oh, there's a bind landing going straight to Jay Reed, but again, a brilliant solo plan and turning the least one around. Kriots are going to get the first kill, and they're going to keep chasing onto Cyanide from Peke. They're going to dive straight towards him. A lot of damage onto Peke. Cyanide actually low. Jay Reed is going to fall in this one as well, but look at Kerb pushing around the back time. Oh, okay, I'm, I can I'm go. Here. You ready? Yeah. I am going, yeah. going, go, 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 go. I ult. Oh, nice. 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 Nice! nice. Jerry dives into the middle of them. Kevin will go in as well. They've killed Peke. They're gonna kill off Cyanide. That's a double kill for Creatin. And the game won't come in for Kerb.